On this episode of 5 Minutes of Cloud, OpenStack and how OpenStack applies or enables infrastructure as a service. So most people, when they talk about OpenStack, uh, are really talking about OpenStack as an infrastructure as a service tool set. They're really looking at it uh, as a way to manage some of the core capabilities uh, of the infrastructure as a service space. And when we think about infrastructure as a service, um, we've had some other episodes where we've talked about what that is, specifically when we're talking about the NIST model of cloud, the, the US National Institutes of Standard and Technology cloud model. But really we're talking about a, a service capability that is looking at the basic data center services, and that's usually as, as simple as compute, network, and storage services managed in a cloud lifecycle uh, model. So on-demand, self-service, elastic, uh, metered, and with broad network access. That, that makes it a cloud service, and getting access to data center services like that is, is really the core thing that OpenStack really tries to do. Now, when we say OpenStack, really we're talking about a set of software tools um, that are designed to provide uh, infrastructure as a service management middleware. Um, it isn't necessarily the thing that is creating the virtual compute or virtual network service, it is managing that. It isn't necessarily the thing that is creating the, uh, the, the storage environment, the object storage environment is one of, one of the components or uh, block storage components, but it's managing access to and con connectivity between that. Um, so when we look at that middleware, there are a set of components that are considered core, and actually the community has decided to split the, the modeling of the infrastructure service uh, in, into a set of core components, basically core management software pieces, and uh, big tent components, which are additional services that can extend the capabilities that infrastructure as a service is core of OpenStack. When we talk about those core capabilities, we're talking about things like identity management, specifically integrating uh, identity into all of the different resource management components. So are you allowed to have compute or network or storage? Um, uh, compute management services, and in conjunction with compute, there's a core service called Glance that also provides image, basically uh, disk image or potentially eventually container services image uh, for the compute resources uh, component. Uh, there's the, well, Keystone for identity management. Uh, Nova is the compute management entity. Uh, and there's a, a, a sort of a, a related service called uh, Ironic that provides bare metal versus virtual compute uh, management resource. Uh, Glance I mentioned as the core image, uh, managing uh, disk image, system images that get used as a part of the virtualization or physical resource deployment. Um, there's network service, and network is a very large space in and of itself. So there's the Neutron program that is the principal network service component. Uh, there are some additional ones that are in the big tent. Uh, Astara is one that's sort of coming along as a potential alternative on the, or slightly different version of the, the, the Neutron-based services. Um, and then in the storage space, there are a couple of different uh, entities there. The, the principal two, the part of the core services are Cinder, which provides access to block storage. So this is the classic data center storage that would get attached to a compute entity to provide persistent database storage, for example. Um, and then there's also a project called Swift, which provides object storage. Object storage is very popular in the web services space uh, because object storage provides storage that looks like uh, another web endpoint, something that you can just point a web browser to and pull the data over or point a, an HTTP session at and actually get the data that way. So that makes up the core services, the core infrastructure services of OpenStack. The other real value proposition and the real point behind infrastructure as a service from OpenStack is programmatic access. The thing that's been driving this cloud space really is the, the shift from everything being done manually or having to have a, a user create or manage services to being able to do this programmatically. And the OpenStack services have a consistent set of APIs to talk to compute network storage uh, and, and object storage services and manage and manipulate those environments. And with that, um, you can now create infrastructure as code uh, as, as one of the common ways of thinking about these services. And with infrastructure as a code, I can now build and deploy the model that my application needs in terms of the infrastructure services it has. Uh, there are some extensions that are embedded in the OpenStack environment, things like uh, CloudInit is a tool, 
that makes it easy to then automate some of the initial bring up of a new compute entity that's been deployed through the OpenStack API services. And that can also then be done programmatically. So from an, uh, beginning to end, you can programmatically ask for infrastructure to be created and automatically deploy your application, your database services, your, uh, your, your messaging services, and can all map all those pieces together all in an end-to-end -end programmatic fashion. And being good cloud citizens, you also then have the ability to remove all of those components or scale them up or scale them down, add new network services, remove network services, et cetera. All of that through programmatic interfaces. And so this is the real value of infrastructure as a service, but also uh, the tools that, that are enabled through using OpenStack as a consistent middleware for then managing your infrastructure services. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. In addition, if you want to stay apprised of the latest ongoing updates in the cloud space, uh, sign up for our Twitter feed and our mailing list. We also update you on upcoming webinars and classes that we provide.